Thank you for the opportunity of presenting here. I am Michael Freudenthal, a PhD student in sociology working on the influence of fiction on participation and learning in analog games. My PhD takes place in the Experis lab, uh, who also has uh, 12,000 or so uh, collection of analog games dating from the 19th century. And uh, it is funded by the Gaming Lab program that is supporting analog game research. This video poster aims to present a part of an article uh, I am writing about my case study of Legion Siberian Story, a Czech LARP in the historical setting of the creation of the first Czechoslovak Republic in 1918. To, um, to contextualize uh, our uh, theoretical uh, context, uh, we will talk about role playing games as the assemblage of practices uh, of uh, conventions, agents, and signs um, that is described by CAM that can be also summarized as creating fiction through enactment of a character, a process that Corali David calls intercreation, interaction and creation. We will use also the conceptual tool of frames to describe play fiction and the process of intercreation. A frame basically is a layer of preconceived meaning uh, that one uses to interpret a situation and then collectively uh, negotiate it, most times implicitly, such as uh, joining a table full of strangers while acting embarrassed to find out what social role would be proper, acceptable for everyone uh, for you to, to take. Fiction is a frame also in the way that it is subjective to attribute more or less fictionality uh, to something, but we can agree on it. So we could see, think that playing a role-playing game with an historical setting, intercreating history could feel like a paradox, but it is not. Uh, there is a tension though between uh, the frame of play and the frame of documentarity. Uh, this tension um, makes most likely uh, the frame of play takes take priority and the all experience is interpreted as a kind of documentary-based fiction. So, which makes that interesting. To go deeper on that, we, we could ask what relationship does player build with the historical setting they use? To answer this, empirical qualitative uh, fieldwork uh, seemed most proper to us. So the following analysis is based on data from my ethnographic observant participation to an international session of legend and uh, with interviews. Uh, my participation as a player and as a researcher was communicated by the organization uh, who gave everyone a chance to, uh, to ask uh, questions and to um, ask me to not observe them. And for each conversation that was going on for a few minutes or so, I reminded why I was so curious. My data also follows recommendation from the newly created uh, ethics committee of my uh, university, although they are not yet prepared for all the issues of ethnography. Before starting, uh, we will just uh, go um, on the three layers of frames that find, among many others, uh, so occurring in a role-playing game. There is the basic frame that is social, intercultural, and event-based uh, frame. The play frame that is intercreative and role-playing. And the fiction frame that is historical setting, uh, documentary-based uh, setting. In the following uh, slides, we will show some examples of uh, successful maintaining of frames. Uh, although you can uh, search for um, ruptures on more, more or less intentional, more or less conscious um, use of frame by searching for debates about the concept of steering or uh, of immersion. An example of uh, frame maintaining is given by Margot. Margot is playing um, a character that is ignorant of the world and um, her brother asks her, Oh, what is that song when hearing both a song that both players know? There is a complicity, almost humoristic, qualified by Mergo as silly. Um, it's a collision between them in knowing the song, but reminding each other 
they play characters that do not know the song. In other words, they calibrate a common vision of what is uh, the historical fiction in this LARP and how the character, uh, each other, could um, react. Uh, it is also summed up by Margot later uh, by, shit, did my character know that? So, the historical, historical information um, is mostly given by resources sent by the organization, um, framed as what the players need to know to play. They are trusted enough by players to participate in the intercreative play, but these resources are not seen as primary sources. They are not seen as documentary. They are seen as part of play, a fiction, although with as we can see, um, specific emotional weight attached to it, the feeling of historic authenticity uh, that is um, theorized by Moshoki. This ambivalent status made interviewed player use the knowledge with a kind of prudence once outside the LARP, signaling this might be the wrong information, but some started to fact check the information or even criticize the, uh, the accuracy uh, historical accuracy of the information. Uh, so they do not trust the information, they act with it like it's fiction. This will help us understand uh, more of this weight of historical authenticity, because it's not only linked to history, but to the intercultural, territorial, and cultural context of the LARP. There was something else there, linked to the touristic context of the journey uh, that we made to Czech Republic, of hiking in the Czech countryside, of relying on the Czech organization. It was also linked to the continued presence of members of the organization, supposedly Czech, although not all of them were. Uh, they were here as guides, as NPCs, as photographers that uh, were literally framing us in one of the beautiful pictures that you saw that avoid modern elements such as road uh, villages and electric poles. While we foreigners uh, felt legitimate, legitimate enough in the frame of the lamp to intercreate in the historical setting, we were also in an in intercultural role frame, where Czech folks were at the same time more legitimate and detained implicit knowledge that did not share about what the setting meant to them and its modern implication, which are many. Uh, the um, historical event is uh, politically uh, very uh, significant. This concerned folks gaze is a kind of modulation of the LARP frame due to a documented setting while in social interaction with folks who are directly concerned by this setting. Example of this gaze can be found uh, in other uh, LARPs, such as in reports of the Palestinian Finnish, Finnish LARP Alat Izar, for instance, or more recently, I was able to observe it informally, though, at the Futurist Strait LARP. Futurist Strait, quickly, was a um, dark and absurd uh, satirical uh, realistic LARP about gay conversion therapy. Incidentally, or not, uh, there seemed to be a majority of LGBTQA plus players on, on uh, the runs, uh, on the run I was in. And speaking with cisgender and or heterosexual players, they consciously, consciously felt a, pre a pressure to perform their role, and I quote multiple conversation, respectfully. This politeness, this respect, can be read as delimitation of the concerned people gaze modulation of the social frame of LARP. To sum it up, um, the relationship uh, to historical knowledge players create uh, is mostly framed as fiction for the duration of the LARP. It would be interesting to know what happens next. In LARPs like Legion, whose fiction is built upon documented facts, there can be a weight that lifts the role, the social role of participants um, directly linked to the theme and push away a little bit uh, the other particip participants uh, from feeling legitimate in the frame. This 
First case study uh, allowed me to test protocols to elicit implicit learning for further research uh, on analog games that are not focused on role playing. And more generally, it shows, I think, that empirical and qualitative study of leisurely LARPs might bring a better understanding of learning and uh, framing processes that can then be compared the, to the uh, literature uh, existing empirical or theoretical in more formal settings like game-based learning, serious games, or edulabs. And I, for one, would be happy to contribute to the community in that way. So feel free to send me your remarks, advice, or others uh, my way uh, by mail. And I thank you for your attention.